Welcome to Level Up Tribes. Level Up Tribes provides resources to help you attain the necessary resources to level up your mind, body, and soul and realize your full potential. It is about exploring, learning, providing you with the tools from the experts for you to create a better version of yourself. I am your host, Agnes Goodwine, and welcome Tribes. Today, Carlos Montufad, founder and executive director of the Phoenix World Arts Collective, a nonprofit organization promoting cultural diversity and education in the performing arts scene in Phoenix, is joining us to talk about the beautiful flamingo arts. Carlos' passion for world dance is rooted in his 16-plus year career as a professional flamingo dancer. He experienced firsthand the lack of opportunities available to many aspiring and professional performing artists to improve their craft in a welcoming and supportive environment. This understanding paired with his enthusiasm for bringing multicultural events to the Phoenix art scene culminated in the creation of the Phoenix World Arts Collective. Carlos is the driving force behind creating interesting and elegant events involving people of all ages and cultural backgrounds. Welcome, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It was so exciting coming in and seeing the kids doing their dance and following the instructions. Very yes. organized. Yes, I'm so proud of them. They, they've worked so hard. A few of those students have been taking my class for over a year. And just the progression that I've seen in them and the confidence that they've built up after yes. you know, taking these classes, it's, it's really wonderful. And they, look, they were enjoying it. They are. And then the new students that come in also see that. And that encourages them to awesome. step forward and really push hard. Awesome. So let's um, start this. Um, tell us how your journey began in the flamingo arts. So, okay, so I'm going to go way back <laughs> with this because I am not that dancer that started when they were three years old. Okay, so I saw flamenco when I was four years old in Los Angeles. My mom worked for KWKW radio station and she was always invited to different events one particular event, she said, we were going to go see a flamenco show. I had no idea what that was, but I was going with her. We went to Placito Olvera, and I heard the guitar, mm -hmm. and I heard the castanets. And at four years old, I had the goosebumps just from listening to this music. Didn't know what it was, and it stuck with me. And, and my mom, to this day, will tell you that that's all I talked about. Wow. And so... But growing up, I left L.A. when I was six years old and then moved to El Paso, Texas. I kept focusing my school and, you know, what am I going to do after high school? And never really thought about getting into dance. Uh, I mean, flamenco was a passion of mine, but for me, it was like joining the circus. How do you even start? Right. You know, and I wasn't born into that type of environment. I wasn't born in the dance studio. I didn't even know where to find it. And uh, yeah, so once I moved... From El Paso, I, I came to Phoenix with the hopes of becoming a draftsman and eventually getting into architecture. I took science and math-oriented classes in high school, so everything was like gearing towards architecture, engineering, possibly you know chemistry or something. And, okay. You know, and one day I said, no, I'm going to do this for me. I feel like everything else that I did in my life was for everybody else, but flamenco, I finally said, I'm going to find it. I'm going to ask around. It doesn't hurt to ask around. I was 19 years old when I started. Wow. Class. When I found it well, in that's Phoenix. not too old. Well, but... I in the mean, dance world, is it? It is. It is, okay. Uh, it, it can be. It just depends on your driving force. And as you're older, your body's not as malleable. You know, you're not as flexible. And um, you're not as confident, you sure. know. So <laughs> there's a, there were a lot of blocks in me, especially growing up. And, uh, and finding dance, with, I mean, dance really saved me. It really, it really tamed my waters. And uh, a lot of the questions about me and, and I mean, flamenco really helped me find me. Beautiful. After everything. So, yeah, and I, I took a class with Laura Moya, and she was in her 80s. Wow. Teaching with a cane, and eventually um, was just, she had uh, osteoporosis and couldn't teach okay. anymore. And from there, was just led out to the, the current flamenco generation at that time. And, uh, and right away, it was like the fast track. I took the fast track and uh, became part of Carlo Flamenco here in Phoenix, which was one of the largest flamenco companies here in Arizona at the time, and from there, ended up going to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and studied with the Castros, which is the largest company in the nation. Wow. So I've been very blessed. How was that experience? 
it was it's the it was the best one of the best mem- moments in my life uh taking the chance and just going on a whim leap of faith because i didn't know what to expect you know i knew what flamenco was and and one thing that i did notice as i was beginning my career is that i didn't really go into depth of what flamenco was i knew choreography i understood choreography but just the depth of it and the the communication and the the structures and just even the different rhythms and being just surrounded by guitarists and singers and right. you know amazing dancers all the time okay. was um was really something that I've always wanted and didn't really know until I experienced it. That's beautiful. Can you take us on a journey of the history of flamenco, where it comes from? Okay. Um a lot of people say flamenco is Spanish, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's in Spain. But in reality flamenco is Spanish gypsy. Um so back in 1492 Spain gained back its power from the Moors because Spain was under Moorish control for over 400 years right so that's african influence that's but in 1492 like after Spain gained its control back it pushed everything that was in spanish south wow yeah and this was during the spanish inquisition so if you were moorish if you were jewish if you were anything other than just plain pure spanish you were pushed south and that's where flamenco came mm. so flamenco came from the blending of amongst death amongst the spanish inquisition amongst being pushed into somewhere dark and pushed into the rock and put, i mean they were pushed into the iberian peninsula which is all rock oh my god and they were forced to live in the caves and yeah and within in hundreds of years you know pass by and these cultures lived together and there and there all of their different cultures blend blended together into what it flamenco is now what is the the name of the city um that it's it has, it has a lot of influence it starts uh, with the s i think sevilla yes sevilla yeah so it's sevilla there's jerez and okay. and cuz it's it's all andalusia which is southern spain Okay. Um and those Sevilla, Jerez, um de la Frontera and we have Cadiz. That's the cradle for flamenco. So that's where the between those three cities is where flamenco is, you know, it's the heart of it. Okay. In southern Spain. Have you been there? I haven't. No. No, I to go. haven't. I, I want to go too to, go. to yeah. Spain. Yeah, it's just with my schedule and then I also I work at a school I work for the school and right. it's just it's hard with my responsibilities right now to be able to take that time off to go and I'd love to study out there but the next best thing for me was New Mexico so that's why I went. Awesome. Can you explain the different forms of expression and when I say expression from what I've read and please tell me if I'm wrong in this it kind of includes the dance the guitar the singer. The mm-hmm. Okay. So flamenco started off with the singing. The guitar didn't happen until that was the last thing that came in. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. In flamenco it was all about the singing and that the singing is what captures the sentiment of flamenco. Uh so flamenco rhythms are based off of the emotional scale. So they can go all the way from the seguiria from the really dark dark um palos or rhythms. And you can hear it in the singing. It's like this, hi. You know, there's a. It, it sounds Jewish and almost as if they're they are crying out, yes. like a hilo. They're they're crying out, uh, all the way up to alegrías, which is happiness. You know, so within the music, and it's really the the singing that captures that emotion, and the dancer personifies that. Who's leading who? That's honestly the. The, I th- I feel the most political question. Okay. You know, because the guitarist wants to say they lead it, the singer says, "Well, no, we lead it." Okay. And then the dancer says, "But you're singing for me, so I call you in." Mm. So, it just depends. I feel it it really does depend on the situation and what whatever's happening in, in the cuadro on the stage. Because if it's just the singer singing, the singer's leading it. Yes. Because then the guitarist has to follow and follow the tones and and try to figure out where have to be 10 steps ahead of the singer to know exactly where they're going to go. Yes. When there's a dancer on stage, we have our and that's where our communication comes in. We have our llamadas, which means a call. So there are certain steps within our choreography that actually call in the singer and tell them we need them to sing for us now. Okay. You know, so in the end it it's it's almost a ball that's being tossed between the singer, the guitarist and the dancer and everybody's very sensitive to what's happening on stage. Yeah, just very aware of each other. Okay. And I don't know if you if you've heard of duende. No. 
in flamenco, but it's 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 this like infinite connection that happens between everybody where it's almost out of body because everybody is so in tune with what's happening on stage that it's almost flawless. Yes. And it's just it goes into honestly, it just it goes into another dimension. Right. It's that fire that happens on stage. And that, and people feel it and they witness it. And, and you know, people cry and it, it is a very spiritual um, yes. experience that happened. I witness it with you. Oh, <laughs> you were my first, <laughs> Thank you know, you. at Thank you. the um, Crescent, Crescent Ballroom. Crescent Ballroom. And I saw you mm-hmm. perform. It was very, it was intense, mm-hmm. but it was beautiful. Right. And right. it's just so many emotions that go on when you're watching that performance, you know, and that's, is that what you're trying to do to the audience? Well, it's not so much that I'm trying to do it to the audience. It's, what I'm inviting the audience to witness okay. within me. Yeah. So it's it's literally me opening up my doors and inviting you in with what's happening on stage. It's beautiful. It's, it's it, yeah, it's it's just having that that ability to draw your audience into yes. what you're doing and and you have a you have a musician, you have a singer behind you who are also helping with that and creating yes. the mood and the ambiance with the music and the singing. So it's it's so beautiful. When was your first professional performance? My first professional performance was, oof, there's, I got to go way back. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You're not that old, No, I know, I know, but there's just so many shows, you know, they start blending. But my first, my first professional, um, well, I I guess I can put in different categories, like my first onstage experience. Yeah, yeah, your first one. Onstage was I mean, with Laura Moya, she used to have us perform for the retirement communities out in Sun City. That was like my first show that I was like, you know, really shaky and really yeah. anxious and nervous and excited. And um, and I'm really glad that she gave me that opportunity because that's what got me hooked was being able to express myself to the world at yeah. that time. And then after that, then I had Carlo Flamenco and we were in the main stage. That okay. was the main stage with you know, in Chandler with seats over 800 and really exciting stuff. And you go around the States too. Mm -hmm. I've seen you um, perform in Sedona. You've done? Yes, yes. I perform in Sedona uh, with uh, Gaetano Franco of Mosaico. He invites me to uh, perform up there for like Cinco de Mayo and special events. Uh, I currently also work for Carlota Santana, who's based out of New York and North Carolina. Her main main office is in New York um, and she's a high you know, flamenco name here in the States. And she helps connect uh, Madrid, Spain to New York and creates nice. workshops for up and rising, up and coming uh, dancers and, and, you know, just creates workshops. But through her, I go to North Carolina. I've been to New York teaching low income families and just schools that are in like bad cities. Right. And, you know, like we go into the Bronx, we go into Queens and we yes. go into these uh, places where, it's not that easy to find. Right. An well, arts. you want to expose these the, the, the right, kids right. from these communities to flamenco. Right. It's offering flamenco as a tool for them. So yes, we do teach flamenco and the history and the dancing, but it's also the main umbrella is you can use the arts as a form to heal, yes. as a form to express yourself, to say what it is that you want to say without using words. Yes. What yeah. an awesome idea. Tell us about your dance studio. Okay, so currently, I mean, I don't have a studio, but I work out of Arizona Dance District okay. out here on 7th Street in Rose Lane, uh, north of Bethany Home in Phoenix. And uh, they are wonderful. They've been so wonderful to me, Randy Parker, who's the, the owner. And she allows me to teach out of here on Friday nights. Right now I'm teaching an adult's class from 6.30 to 7.30. And my children's class right now for the summer is running from 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. Okay. Uh, but usually my kids' classes go for an hour and a half uh, okay. because now I have a student company and we'll run class for the first hour and then go through choreography for the last half hour. There's other things that under the studio that you guys provide, which is the world dance, the cafe flamenco, flamenco and vivo. Can you tell us a little bit about the world dance? Yeah, and- yeah, sure. So it's actually these shows are my progression of being a solo artist, okay. of finally pulling myself away from dance companies and being put under a label of a different name because it's just through my career, I, I used to find it very difficult to even be labeled Carlos Montufar and it's my name. 
Yeah. You know, people wanted to right. just claim me and, and stamp their company name on me. Uh, so that's when I, I went. The moment I branched out, I started World Dance. Uh, and I was mm, in a dark place in my life because I, I felt disowned. I felt ostracized. I, you know, there's the politics of just being a dancer, period. It, it can be very overbearing. But I pulled through and I started World Dance. And that was my way of, of opening the doors to other world artists. So I would use my show as a platform to help promote the Indian culture. I had burlesque arts. I had belly dancers. I had Mexican folk. So it was just a medley show of okay. the world arts that were here, all local. And through my network was exposing them. Yes. You know, so, and so I started World Dance and then that kind of flopped. The performers were very, very, very supportive, but it was, it had always been hard for me to find a venue. And then me being a solo artist, you know, I'm not this big organization. I didn't have a lot of money uh, to put these shows together. And so finally I had to like step away and take a break and really focus on me. I am flamenco. Let me focus on just flamenco for a while. Okay. And so then I started Cafe Flamenco. Okay. And this show I was trying to do every two to three, four, to, you know, four times a, a year, every season. And yeah, so now I'm just rotating. I'll have a world dance show. I'll have a Cafe Flamenco, which I do bring artists in from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I have a lot of network in Albuquerque. Amazing artists, amazing musicians. I use Chayito Champion from San Antonio, who's a wow. singer. I brought in Alexa Miton, who currently lives in Maryland. And I used to dance with her, with Ini Hastro's amazing dancer, soloist dancer. So, yeah, so it's nice to expose them yes. to my community and to right. show my community that flamenco is, you know, even though our flamenco community here in Phoenix may be rather small, that it's nation, it's international, it's, you know, right. the world knows what flamenco is. How do you keep the younger generation involved in flamenco? I'm currently now making all of my shows, just depending on the, you know, um, type of things that are being shown. But I'm, I keep my shows free to children, you know, and I feel just because I see them and I see me right. when I was four, mm. you know, and I want to be able to provide that to them. And for them to not know what it is, but to know that they have this hunger. Because I was always very hungry for culture. Yes. You know, I'm Mexican Salvadorian. Uh, my mother's second uh, marriage, she was married to a Colombian. Mm -hmm. And so I, I felt like I ended up taking on these different cultures, but didn't have my own. Yes. And so when I chose flamenco, it was like I chose me. I chose my culture. I chose where I feel I am coming from. When I was four, I decided for me, this is what I want. That's powerful. And so I want to create that same thing for the younger generations. And I want to provide classes and provide events and, you know, just different, uh, just different platform for them. You know, if they want to paint, if they want to go to listen to different music and meet different musicians, you know, I, I want to create that for them. That's beautiful. When I was doing my research um, prior to our interview, I stumbled upon an article because flamenco is so it's an old art form of dance and, mm -hmm. and music. And so now, I don't know if you've heard of her, but Ro Rosalia. Oh, Rosalia. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she's like a young pop R&B. years old. Yeah. But she's bringing that flavor in mm -hmm. and introducing the new generation into this whole new world, right. which right. I, I think is awesome. It is. It's amazing. But what's so, with Rosalia, what's, what's so... Um, kind of tear jerking is that she is an artist and she's a flamenco artist. Oh, well, that's the politics right now. She's yes. not flamenco. <laughs> she is flamenco. She's not puro. You know, she's not pure enough and she's bringing all this stuff mm -hmm. and she needs to stay over there and call it something else. And, but in the end, she's pulling from her roots. You know, she's pulling from her roots, her journey, her experience, her lessons, how she's learned and she hears it differently. Yeah. And she wants to express that. Yes. And in the end, I just feel... Either you're going to listen or you don't. Right. Um, but it is my etiquette that I don't sit there and criticize other right. people's art and the way that they're Because that can expressing. lead to something else, you know? Exactly. And now people are hearing this and they're like, wow, oh my gosh. And she's speaking Spanish and she's singing in this. And mm -hmm. But in the end, she's exposing them to her culture. Yes. Because even, by the way, I mean, for me, it's, this, it's flamenco. Right. It's a different... It's a different strand. It's going in a different direction. Flamenco, the way flamenco is now, 
is not how it was 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you know, the mm -hmm. Antiguo style. And um, Do you think that's okay in, in, in the Flamingo world? Are they the old school uh, mentality? Are they okay with it changing a little bit? Mm, what do, what's the history behind that? It's just, and again, it goes into so many different branches because they want flamenco to stay puro. They want okay. it pure. Yeah. You know, flamenco is flamenco, and that's it. A peacock is a peacock, and that's it. You add to it, yeah. and it's something else. Okay. And that I do agree to. You know, because there you right away can feel it and hear it and say, okay, there's this is coming from a pure strand. Okay. Um, but it's when you start to tweak it, I and I feel that's what Rosalia is doing. Yes. She's tweaking it. You may not want to call it flamenco. It's a fusion. It's mm -hmm. something else. It's not puro. It's not pure. Uh, but I can appreciate what she's doing. You know. Yes. And uh, and again, it's. She's reaching more audience. She's reaching more people that are now going to listen to it. Because I know people now who won't listen to flamenco. They don't understand it. You know, why are they crying? And why do they sound like they're screaming all the time? And that, that's how I hear it. But right. for me, it's like this, they're crying out to God, you know, at the end. <laughs> they don't understand. So, again, it's about, all about perspective. Yes. And, and just knowing the difference, you know. But in the end, you just have to appreciate people for yes. what they're doing. and what they're. We're all trying to do this together. What is the most challenging about what you do? I feel that with being an artist, uh, a dancer, it I feel sometimes it's it's hard to get people to take me serious with what I do. I do have a lot of people who call it my hobby. I tell them that I'm a flamenco dancer and they say, oh, okay, well, what do you do for substance? Mm. What do you do for sustenance? How do you pay your bills and how do you, you know, and in the end, just the way that you do, I got to hustle. I got to right. get my name out there. I got to find work and, you know, and that's the main thing is just trying to get people to really see what I do through my eyes. Yes. What is the most rewarding? My kids. Yeah. That's the most rewarding is, is, um, especially my kids now that, uh, when they first start, they're so nervous and they're so anxious and, I hear a lot of I can'ts, I can'ts, and I don't know hows. Mm -hmm. And so one day, eventually, I wrote I will on the mirror with a dry erase marker. And so every time I would hear something negative, I'd just point to I will. And so now mm -hmm. they just know not to say it. Okay. You know, and then you will. You will get it. It's not today, maybe tomorrow. Yes. You know, and so, and like today, I mean, I had a, I have a student who just had something Within her family, she had a, a tragedy within her family and still came to class, wow. you know. And so that, for me, is her way of dealing with her issues, yeah. being so young with her personal issues. She wanted a break, and she came to class, and that's what flamenco is. You, yeah. you express what you're feeling through your feet and through your arms, and you, you find other ways, you know, because if you speak it, you break so it's trying to find other ways to really reflect that and to release that right. too. So Very therapeutic. It is. It is. And so, and I just, I love that. I love to see how they're progressing and how they're becoming stronger and how their ears getting better and how they're understanding compas or the meter. Okay. And, uh, and they can, I speak flamenco language to them and they know what, it, what I mean, you know, so they're understanding the communication. Right. And that to me tells me that I'm doing my job. Yes. Yeah, well, I watched them. I was watching them, and they were, I'm like, oh, my God, they can do better things than I can do. You know? And they were, they were into it. Yeah, That's what yeah. I loved about it. They were, you know, they were passionate about what they were doing at that moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Um, what advice would you offer someone who's considering learning flamenco or just, you know, for the purpose of just learning it or the purpose of being what, where you are today? Well, first of all, it all be, it it all starts with being an aficionado, someone who, because that's how I started. I just mm -hmm. went to shows. If I knew there was a show, I'd go and I support and I'd sit there and I just instead of just watching the show, I try to understand what was going on. I I would have a list full of questions of who, what, when, where's, and why's. Yes. And uh, and that's how you start. You just get yourself in there, and if you and that's that for me is taking class. You're, you're getting a first-hand experience with a singer, with a musician, and with a dancer. 
And there's nonverbal cues going on all the time while they're on stage. It's trying to unlock that code. What, what's happening here within this rhythm? Okay. And um, that's how you start. And then take a class and take a, just dabble in everything just so that you understand where everybody where everybody's coming from with the perspective the different the different responsibilities that each element has okay. to create flamenco where can listeners go to see you perform here in phoenix it's it's gotten a little hard for me to just have a weekly gig uh, i'm currently looking for something weekly but all my events are on my website on okay. phxworldarts.org and uh, again, I'll have world dance shows that, uh, that are medleys of all the world arts here in Phoenix. I have Cafe Flamenco, and that exposes the community to just different flamenco artists within our community and outside. And I also just recently last year created De Color y Llanto, which means of color and pain. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, first half of the show is all world arts, and I have these entrances with belly dancers and, and it's just the introduction to the two hour flamenco show. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. And I have food. And when are those? Those I, it's usually in October. Okay. Uh, I, I try to find the days that are, are cooler. Yeah. I, I mean, some Phoenix summers are, are pretty brutal. So everybody leaves, but I'll, I'll try to do it in the fall or in the spring. Beautiful. Is there anything else that you would like to add or discuss that we haven't touched on today? Everything's on my website. Again, phxworldarts.org. Um, you'll have all the information for my classes. I have adult classes on Fridays right now from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Children's okay. classes from 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. And the children have the opportunity to be part of Caña Flamenco which is just a student company. I have this company perform with me at different events. I'll take them to Sedona. They performed just recently and debuted in the Color Llanto to help open up the flamenco show. Um, for the adults, the adults a little more timid. And, <laughs> it, it, you know, and I understand we're busy schedules and all, but I was busy too, right. you know, and I, I found a way to fit it in my schedule just like anything else. And if you really want to do it, you will do it. Do you have a Facebook or Instagram? Yes, you can either find me, Carlos Montufar. My last name is M-O-N-T-U-F-A-R, Montufar. I said Montufar. Yeah. I said it wrong the first time. You didn't. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm used to Montufar, Montufar, Mon, Montufar, Mustafa, whatever, you know. I've heard it all. So now I just I just look up because it started with an M. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yes, my personal is Carlos Montufar on Facebook. And I have my Phoenix World Arts Collective uh, Facebook as well, my organization page. And that pretty much just gives different, uh, just the schedules for the classes, uh, where to register, you just register online. And I, I like to post videos on flamenco and history and things like that. So that's also a good source. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing space with me today. I learned so much and hopefully the <laughs> listeners have learned a lot about you and about the dance and, you know, they can reach out to you and sign up for some classes. Yes, yes, please. And also, if you ever want to email me again, phxworldarts at gmail.com. Thank you, Carlos. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Please visit the website at www.leveluptribes.com. And please subscribe to the podcast and share with your family and friends. Be sure to tune in to our next episode. Catch you all next time, my beloved tribes. <laughs>